Jabber, take it away. Oh, big news story this week. First big news story, Brett Favre. Brett Favre. <laughs> oh, uh, Brett Favre hits his, uh, gets his 500th career passing touchdown on his first career pass to Sir Randy Moss, which Favre claims he was dreaming about for eight to ten years, which was kind of interesting. Are you talking about the bullshit first pass, the, the rock, the Moss to Favre? Yes, Moss oh, to yeah. Favre. That was just <laughs> terrible. <laughs> it, it was exciting. It was, it was a, the only excitement of the first half. Watching Brett Favre run around route was comedy. I mean, People thought horrible. I was crazy when I started Moss as my quarterback this week, but I proved <laughs> them wrong. <laughs> wrong, Colin, for throwing an illegal forward pass. Uh, let's face it, at oh, the end of the day, awesome. it was just plain illegal. It th drew a flag. <laughs> Um, Favre, of course, of course, also uh, throwing for 70,000 yards that night, also breaking the record for um, most texts to a Jets, never mind, oh and uh, also but for I, most fumbles. Yes, yeah, so I was going to say most fumbles. fumbles. Most yeah. career fumbles, unbelievable. Yeah. That's that, the guy who and that didn't include the Good text. and bad record. What's amazing about that night is it was a capsule of his entire career. Yeah. Great moment with the five, first guy to throw 500 TD passes, yeah. they lose on a, on a Favre interception. That is a perfect little he capsule And basically, he Favre the shit out of that game. Yeah, it did, exactly. He Favre the shit out of the whole day. Yeah, 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 the yeah day. everything. He threw his 500th touchdown, he got 70,000 yards, he had to escape some media scrutiny. He cried. Okay, <laughs> hello. Uh, what else did he do? He wore, he, he, wore, he wore his Wrangler jeans. He did everything. Yeah. He wore a Wrangler. Yeah. <laughs> he could mm -hmm. barely contain himself during the press conference. This guy's a piece elbow. of work. He's in pain. Right, yeah. right. And, he, and of course... Oh, uh, jump hug on, on top of Moss. We he had jump the, hugged. The yeah. sem oh, run down the, to the end zone. He did zone. the finger in the air. He hasn't yeah. done that in a while. He yeah. did the finger in the air with yeah. the little... Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Oh, so cute. Oh, now let's, let's talk about the fantasy implications here. I, I, fantasy implications. I, I happen to think that uh, Randy Moss is now just a top 20 wide receiver. He'll have a big game here or there. I don't know if this is going to work out as well for him as it did in New England. I actually, I actually agree with you, Adam. I, what I saw on Monday night was an old guy who really can't air it out, mm -hmm. you know, um, and and for, in Favre. And for Moss, he just didn't seem. He just doesn't have the same blazing speed anymore. He's just not the same. And he receiver. does. He and does something that drives me crazy, and and he does it. Terrell Owens does it. A lot of these guys do it. They'll know it's a run play, and they don't even try. And my thought is, look, if, if you would just sprint 10 yards upfield, even though it's a run play, the safety is going to occasionally go to cover you and open up the field more for your running back. Moss doesn't want to do it. If the ball's not going his way, well, it's Well, like I think play. another big thing, too, Moss doesn't know the playbook. He knows it's sure. a running play. He doesn't know where it's going. Sure. You know, he's going to take a couple steps off the line, grab his guy like he did. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know where the run so play's going. I mean, you're watching him on the sidelines. He's literally, like, learning a play of, like, hey, in the next four, what can I do? Okay, I can go here. All right, great. Put me in. Yeah. So like, you're I don't, he's kind of dumb? No. He's kind of stupid? I'm Stop saying he had three slow. days to learn a playbook. Yeah, right, of course. And, you know, he still was getting by defenders. He's still getting deep. Mm -hmm. He's still got the hands. Is he going to, you know, torch people for four touchdowns and, like, 150 yards? Probably not. But is he going to get you, like, 80 to 90 yards and a touchdown each week? I think he is. Yeah, I'm not recommending to drop him, and I do think he's still an every-week starter. Sure. But, but you can't expect him to, uh, to carry your team like he has every once in a while. You know, there's, there's, there's mm. three or four games a year recently where Randy Moss will single-handedly win it yeah. for you. I don't think that's going to happen as much anymore. But I do think he will get better with more time with Favre. I know even Favre said that. He said, I'd like a little more time to practice with him. But, you know, I, I, I still think this is, this is going to continue to benefit Harvin. Um, I think it continues to benefit Peterson because it opens up the run game a lot more. Um, I think it kind of hurts the Sant. I, uh, I do, I, I too. I really do because he, yeah. he is now no longer the red zone target Except one. for this. I think Favre was a very risky start this week. Well, I think there's a possibility, and I think he definitely starts. Mm -hmm. He's far, 289 games. But I, I think there actually, for the first time, is a possibility that he may come out of the game. And if he comes out of the game, I think that it's helps totally Besant and it yeah. helps Percy because yeah. Tavares is going to check down to, to well, everything Randy, under Randy Moss is not the kind of guy who will run a little eight-yard sl slant. I mean, they'll do it occasionally, but he's a deep threat. That's his yeah. job. His job is to go down His job is to get an field. extra safety in yeah. the back to have to well, help I mean, cover. if you look at that first Harvin touchdown, that was a slant. It was a slant pass, and then Harvin turned it into a touchdown. I mean, he made some great moves, and, and he, he, yeah, exactly. It was a great play. Yeah. Um, you know, Moss doesn't get him like that. Moss literally just out jumps other people for the ball. You throw yep. it up to him, you, and you, you know he's going to get it most of the time. What's, uh, what's our next fantasy story here? Next story is, uh, let's talk a little bit about, yes, we're going to talk about Cleveland. 
<laughs> Seriously. Uh, Jerome Harrison. Cleveland would be so annoyed by that. They hate me right now. There's hundreds of thousands of them watching me. No, right they're now. probably all going. Yeah, we know. It's, it's clear. I mean, come yeah. on. You live in Cleveland. You might love your team, but at a certain point, you got to be like, show. oh god. Uh, I'll know? wait for yeah. stupid for the Zucker brothers. At least we have LeBron. Stupid for oh. <laughs> At least we have LeBron. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> wow. I'm, I'm interested wow. in this next story. Yeah. So the next story is <laughs> Mike Bell in Jerome Harrison out. Yeah. Um. Implications. Well, Mike Bell, I think we can all agree, better fit in Cleveland. Yeah. Um, solid running back. The guy can play. He just hasn't yeah. had a chance. It's great for the Saints last year. Right. Had over 100 yards in his two starts. Great yeah. for the Saints, right? Good point, Adam. Um, how does this bode? What, but what does this bode for for Jerome Harrison, Mike Bell, Peyton Hillis? I, I think this helps Harrison. I think Mangini is an idiot. Uh, we talked about this before the show. Harrison saved Mangini's job last year with his play at the end of the year. And then, then this year, I know Harrison stumbled out of the gate a little bit, but Mangini just like threw him on the bench, not a thought, you know, had no loyalty to his boy. And Harrison's a talented guy. And now he he's not he he's not Adrian yeah. Peterson, but he's a talented guy, and I think he'll fit in with Philly's system better. That said, obviously McCoy's the guy there, but should McCoy get hurt, Harrison is a perfect fit to go in and do exactly yeah. what McCoy was doing. Um, and the same could be said for Mike Bell with Peyton Hillis. They're both, you know, put their head down. Cover up the ball and power three kind of runners. Who's the so. better fantasy option right now, JJ? Hillis. Oh, you mean out of I'm Bell sorry, and Harrison? Harrison. Harrison? Who's the Harrison. guy you want to pick up now? You can only get one. <laughs> I'm like, Hillis. A Rod. Uh, Barry Sanders. JJ says A Rod is definitely the better guy to pick up. Right now. Uh, I, think, I, I think it's Bell. Yeah. I think just because Peyton Hillis has been fantastic, but he takes a lot of wear and tear. He's dinged up, yeah. And I don't know whether Harrison's going to get as many characters carries right away. You know, yeah. there's an injury Harrison can definitely step in. Sure. But I think Bell is going to go in and split the carries like like they were planning to do with Harrison and Hillis in the beginning. Mm-hmm. And so I think he's a much better pickup fantasy-wise right now. Although yeah. Harrison could be a sleeper. And and it's also a much easier scheme to learn in I Cleveland. say this, by the way, as I have Mike Bell's mm-hmm. stats up and I think about picking him up. <laughs> um, it's a, the, the Philly system is a lot more complicated for running right. back to learn because there's a lot of pass. Yeah. And you got to learn those routes. You got to learn your blitz pickup. Whereas Cleveland runs. Cleveland's pound, head down, a lot of up the middle, yeah. pound so it, find Bell your hole, come right and in go. and not even miss a yeah. miss Which is a why thing, I so. think like it, yeah, Bell is also better because with they're using Hillis for everything in Cleveland, you know, for making so many plays yeah. right now that he's going to get worn and torn a lot quicker, I think. Yeah. Um, especially this weekend, which I'm yeah, I which we were talking about this earlier, Hillis risky start this weekend against the Steelers. Sure. Anybody's and, a risky start and against and the yeah. Steelers. McCoy, and with Colt McCoy <laughs> starting yeah. uh, for them, like oh Pits- boy, Pittsburgh's I- gonna run a brand new defense. It's gonna have twenty seven guys in the box. I mean, it's literally, they're, they're going to be like, we know you can't throw it. So we're yeah. just, boom. Steelers are just, they're, they're so good. Yeah. They're, they're, they've emerged, I think, as a team that you think yeah. about sitting people against. Yeah. yeah. And, of course, just, if you have their D, you're starting them this week. Their D is so uh, good. Yeah. So, so, yeah, I, I just hope that they don't hurt Hillis. <laughs> 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 I didn't realize Claire's very concerned for your health. Hillis was a short, fast white guy. <laughs> yeah. Next news story. <laughs> Next news story. Uh, well, there's some one thing that's not rotten in the state of San Francisco, and that would be Michael. I've got Crab's Tree. Uh, Crab Tree, great game last week, uh, over 100 yards. Michael Crabby Tree. Crabby Tree, seriously, because they're all crabby up there. Um, even this picture of Singletary and yeah. Alex Smith, which you can't see right now. Um, is Michael Crabtree, has he finally arrived? Is this the year? Claire? I think, uh, I mean, he came in looking a lot better mid-year last year than he has this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think everything is really iffy there right now. And I think my my theory is that it has a lot more to do with Singletary than it does with Alex Smith. or. You mean the new Mike Tice? <laughs> and so I think they're suffering from a lack of cohesion, uh, you know, off the field there in practice. Um, so I think Crabtree, yeah, they, they just haven't gelled. They haven't connected. But 
I don't know. He played well. So you're last thinking by week. week 19 or 20? Well, that was yeah. like an yeah. absolute <laughs> not answer at all. There was a lot of time <laughs> in both not answering that question. You don't like him as a start. I got an answer. I don't like him as a start. I have an answer. Can we do this in five seconds apiece? Yes, we can. He's not a start because his quarterback's Alex Smith, and he's a joke, and they need to get rid of him. And he is the cancer that is killing that team, and he's done. He needs to go. He's not a start because San Francisco is still an impotent offense. Well, but it's largely an impotent offense because when he gets you three touchdowns, he'll also throw three interceptions. Can we use a word besides impotent? No. No. I don't think I just. My vocabulary is impotent. Is not quite ready for you to start yet. Right. Great. Reliable. Got it. Good. Certain matchups I, I might, but yeah. Yeah. Not an Definitely don't guy. get rid of him, but uh, Michael Crabtree, not a big start yet. Okay. Yeah. Uh, last thing. I've uh, got a couple of things great. to add. Adam, let's shoot it over um, to you. There's a couple of news stories. Where there's there's a lot of questions about whether or not Vic will be back. Um, uh, he didn't practice today, but he's not a guy that needs to practice before playing, although they'd like to see it. I know they want him to play. Um, at this point, he's probably about a 50-50 shot to start. Um, follow us on Twitter, and I'll let you know before the games. Obviously, he, if he starts, you, you start him. The guy's been unconscious. Um, McCoy practiced today, LaShawn McCoy, so he looks like he's going to be good to go. Um, Harrison won't be the guy there this weekend. McFadden, um, it's looking more and more like he might play, but even if he does, I'm going to recommend you sit him because Bush is healthier. Mm. And he ran great last week. Great. So I don't think they're going to risk McFadden. Um, even if he plays 10 carries, y you don't want to start that. Um, and then, you know, we got a couple questions with these quarterbacks. I mean, Rodgers, Favre, we might be in a bad situation again this week. Again, we, we don't know. We have no idea whether they're going to start or not. It's really, yeah. it's really, it's, it, it actually is questionable. Not just questionable as in, well, you know they're going to play questionable. These guys Yeah, these know. guys are actual, like, yeah. You and know, it's and rare for Favre. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I really think Favre is going to start, but I think the question is, does he play the whole game if that, that elbow bothers him? Yeah, and again, we're not saying this in case you're starting Favre. Th this more affects the it more affects, placement. like, yeah, the, the if player. It's ja if it's Tavarius Jackson, you know, then, it's a huge downgrade. Then Chank is great. And, and Moss is maybe even, you know, I, I don't yeah. know. I mean, you start him, but you can't expect much, much out of him with Tavarius. Mm -hmm. uh, one yeah. last thing, a little breaking news happened as we were starting the show. Saints signed Julius Jones. Right. Um, congratulations on picking what, what was up the wording you saw in that yeah. trashy RBs. I got yeah, a stud. Plan. It came through on Bleacher Report as stud RB. Saints signed stud RB. Julius yeah, Jones. not a stud. Like, not, it, like no. I could expect. Like I would like a nice title of journeyman <laughs> running back. <laughs> yeah. um, remember that even. guy who everybody always talks about but yeah. never he's quite not performs. Not even a journeyman, really. I mean, he's been with a couple of teams. However, journeyman to me is like you've been with like seven or eight teams. Yeah. I think that that's he, what a journeyman the is to me. Trying to like desperately, you know, fill holes with band aids right now, gushing hole, and it's just it's a bummer. Yeah. yeah and Chris Ivory apparently is having some legal trouble. And <laughs> <laughs> so oh yeah. A bummer. Yeah. There fight he got into when he was playing in Washington, and now he's going to get uh, brought up on assault charges. Oh god. And. Uh, uh, so that's that's interesting. I think Jones will get carries, but uh, he'll but do with him what he always does. He gets about a yard, and then he puts his head down and falls on the ground. That's how Julius <laughs> Jones runs the ball. It's like how Bernie Kosar used to throw. <laughs>